My head is the cloud. This cheeseburger is your data. Mmm. Hey guys, and as you might have guessed from my intro, we're going to talk about cloud today and specifically about Azure. Um, uh, the plan here is to do an overview of uh, Azure networking and uh, to help me with that, I have the one, the only, Mr. Cloud Solutions Architect himself, Ryan Berry. Ryan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Great, uh, great to see you again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely great to see you. I miss seeing the RV above the closet. <laughs> it's good to see that some things never change. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and in the Chippendale. Yeah. And the Chippendale over the other shoulder. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, how you been, man? I'm doing. I've been doing good. Yeah, uh, this cloud stuff's keeping us all busy. Uh, I, I think it's uh, it's catching on. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and that's a good thing. Um, I, I read a great article the other day uh, about how you know the Microsoft Cloud Vision. Is is unbeatable because of the fact that we do all cloud or hybrid, yep. uh, and that that's just something that nobody else can do. Right. And and we'll talk a little bit about that today, actually, with in uh, you know some of the network connectivity options. So yeah, that's a, that's I think we have a really strong play there. Um, you know, I I also read some interesting Forrester articles talking about uh, how typically on average that a uh, you know some of the enterprise customers can save in a four hundred plus percent range on. And uh, you know, IT budgets for the operational costs of people racking and stacking servers, and you know, watching the blinky lights and patching patching the stuff that has blinky lights and all that kind of yeah. thing. So, so it's a it's a pretty significant uh, you know savings, and I think that you know we're definitely seeing a lot of momentum and customers you know beginning to realize that um, you know it's a, in, in in moving workloads uh, to the cloud at uh, at a pretty rapid pace. Yeah, that's awesome. So speaking of moving workloads to the cloud. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about Azure networking. And I know we've talked about this before. Yep. Um, in fact, we did an episode a couple years ago on it. Uh, but so much has changed that I thought that it would be a good idea to, to have you back and just kind of talk about some of the different networking options that we have. And I'll, actually, if, you're, if, you're, you know, if you'll be kind enough, I'd love for you to actually walk us through setting up a, a, a network in Azure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can do that. I've got a couple already pre-configured, but we can. It's not uh, not very difficult to actually walk through building one. So we can we can do it a couple different ways. I'm going to show you one that's uh, uh, already set up and even connected all the way back to my home network, and then uh, then we'll show you how to do it do it from scratch. Awesome. And you've got a special router you were telling me about. Yeah, yeah. There's a number of ways that you can actually connect from from you know, what we call site to site VPN. Um, you know, if you're using an IPsec tunnel to connect your business uh, to to Azure, and um, you know, there's that's that's one of uh, a couple different ways. Another way is uh, something called Express Route, which we talked about uh, in an earlier episode as well. There's more of a yeah. high speed, low latency, direct connection, uh, but uh, VPN. There, we have a number of different devices that are supported. You know, from the likes of Cisco, Checkpoint. Uh, and so forth. I personally own some hardware from a company called Ubiquity. So they have, uh, I've got a bunch of access points in my home. Uh, they're they're pretty slick. Power over Ethernet. Got a, some little uh, flying saucers hanging from the ceiling. Different different rooms and and sections of the house. But um, I, I have a, a Ubiquity. Um, I think it's called a a I'm trying to remember if it's called a, a Ubiquity Pro router that um, supports IPsec tunnels to Azure. So it can be properly configured to go. Uh, it, and actually, the, the the more difficult and challenging thing with um, home networking, you know, I have a Comcast as my internet provider, is that everything's natted behind uh, a, you know a, a firewall, so it's a little bit more challenging to establish a connection through that. So, yeah. um, specifically, this router can do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and, and start by taking a look at some of the differences between. Um, what we talked about in the past when it comes to networking with Azure and what's changed, you know, specifically with some of our deployment models in Azure and kind of why it matters and makes sense to, to rehash some of these, um, you know, nuances and feature and capabilities that, that um, you know, have certainly changed significantly for the better uh, in, in the Azure world. So I'm going to switch over to some slides. So, uh, Lex, you know, when we talked previously, we had the, um, something that was called the Azure Service Model. And basically, what, what that is, you know, think of it as a veneer that exists in all of our regional data centers that requests are sent to, 
to you know provision a virtual machine or create a network or create a VPN gateway as an example. Um, and what we did, what we did, um, you know, when when you think about a, a virtual machine, when you created a virtual machine, all the artifacts uh, that are associated with that virtual machine, such as the IP addresses, you know, the storage accounts, and so forth, were kind of all created as one homogeneous, you know, block or, or, or logical entity. And there's a couple of, of distinct. I don't want to use the word challenges because it was the right direction for us to take when we rolled it out. Um, but you know, as the volume of users grew in using Azure, and you know, the, the customer adoption was increasing at a, at a pretty rapid velocity, um, you know, the creation time for a virtual machine was you know would grow significantly. You know, it might take 20, 30 minutes to to create a virtual machine just because everything was was um, you know passed to this this layer in Azure that created everything on your behalf. Yeah. So, so fast forward to what we what we launched. Um, at, I think it's maybe two two and a half years ago. Uh, we call it Azure Resource Manager, and what that did, and as you can see, as the blue box is built out, is it changed how things are are um, referred to in Azure when you're deploying objects or or um, you know some you know workloads. So in this particular example, you know you have a virtual machine. That virtual machine has a NIC, that that network interface can have any number of, of public or private IP addresses as part of a, a virtual network. Uh, that virtual network um, you know has different subnet um, and or objects that are associated with it. Um, you can also you know associate load balancers and and um, you know so forth. So so when you think about just just the the creation process alone, um, what we what we actually have in the Azure Fabric is a a what we call a resource provider for compute or for virtual machines, one for network, you know, for creating network interfaces and and um, you know virtual networks and so forth in Azure. So when you send all these instructions to Azure to say, hey, build me a VM with all this stuff. Um, we can actually do a lot of things in parallel. So, you know, the, the creation time of a, of a virtual machine was reduced from, you know, that 20 to, you know, 30 minute time frame that I, I quoted previously to minutes. Um, so, so, you know, this architecture is a much more scalable to be able to accommodate demand. You know, if we see all of a sudden a ton of customers are creating virtual machines, but well, we can independently scale, you know, the, the layer of Azure um, in our, you know, particular region that you're communicating with um, to have more compute fabric capabilities or, or infrastructure um, in existence to be able to you know accommodate the demand of, of customers that are, that are creating those resources. So it's a you know distinctly different model than what we had in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so you know in in one thing to to know you know I, I've in working with a lot of customers who had previously deployed stuff in in what we now deem as classic. Um, you, or Azure service model uh, a path or, or method that you know these resources are not able to to directly communicate with um, resources that are, are created with Azure Resource Manager. So for instance you can't take a classic virtual network and deploy a Azure Resource Manager VM into it and you know vice versa. So so we have to do some some things at a network layer to be able to allow them to, to communicate. So um, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, about how that works, and we'll see some examples of that. But I just want to kind of highlight, you know, what what's changed and, um, and and why, and then also, you know, we can use that to kind of address some of the stuff we'll talk about in, in this episode and in coming episodes. Does it look different in the portal? In other words, has this change impacted what a customer sees when they go to the portal? Um, yeah, so you can you can actually create. That's a good question. So uh, we do have um, the, the the new portal, the uh, portal that Azure dot com, and the, the um, that's where you where all of the ARM or Azure Resource Manager stuff is created from. It's the only place you can create the stuff on the right hand side. Um, and the older portal, which um, still is is around because there's some some services that have to still be managed in that um, specifically Azure Active Directory, uh, some components of that. Um, so that's in the uh, the manage.windowsazure.com portal. Um, so you can create some of the classic stuff in the new portal, um, but but yes, there is um, uh, there is a, a difference when you actually create um, you know create these resources, and you can actually see it in the portal. Like if you created a VM, a classic VM, you're going to be prompted for 
all of this stuff at creation time. And when you create a VM on the resource manager context or, or, or model, um, you can actually, you know, you, you create the VM object, well, you can actually point it to maybe a, you know, network interface or a VNet that already, that you previously created. So you, you kind of, you can, that, that modular architecture is visible in the portal as you, as you create things. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I yep. noticed. That's, that's why I ask is, yeah. last time I was up at, on the portal, I noticed that both interfaces were, were available now. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah more and more, um, like I said, we're getting a lot of the classic stuff, um, including the Azure AD, uh, you know, management capabilities into the new portal. So, um, you know, no, no official date has been announced on, on getting rid of the old one, but, um, and, you know, certainly nothing's going to be backported to the old portal. So everything going forward is is in this new uh, new portal where all this, you know, primarily, uh, you know, all the new capabilities that are being released in Azure, I should say, are primarily being done so under this, uh, you know, Azure Resource Manager model. Cool. So if you want to want to take this advantage of something new, you kind of have to rely or you know deploy it using stuff on that right side. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna. Uh, so that this is just showing how you can actually have, I already briefly touched upon this, how you can actually have, you know, that object dependencies where you can actually, you know, refer to VNets maybe you've created separately. When you create a VM, you could point it to, you know, a, a VM maybe you created as part of another, uh, the creation of another VM or maybe the, the execution of another script. So you have this very modular dependency where you can refer to any of those components as, as you create them. All right. So this is uh, the eye chart. And... To your point that you made earlier, you know, this is really our, our unique story from my point of view in terms of, of what we bring to the, the market as opposed to some of our competitors. And that, and that you know, certainly is our, our hybrid story and our ability to bridge the gap between customers wanting to retain resources and infrastructure they might have on-prem and in combination and conjunction with stuff that, that they want to deploy in, in the cloud. Um, and I've seen lots of combinations of that, you know, customers taking, you know, dipping their toes in the water, maybe just using Azure to back up, you know, data or um, you, using some of the features we have for called Azure Site Recovery that we can talk about uh, at our next episode for, for DR purposes to the point of actually having full-fledged applications running in Azure that might actually talk to, to application servers or databases that run back on-prem. Um, so lots of different combinations and variations that I've seen, uh, you know, to that regard. Um, but the point of today's discussion is is networking, and uh, specifically, you know, the stuff here in the middle, where um, uh, you know I'd, <clears throat> I talked about the different connectivity options. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the episode, the site-to-site -site VPN. That's what I have running from my house to Azure. Point-to-site -site VPN. If you had like mobile work for, uh, mobile users, maybe sale, you know, traveling salespeople or. Um, you know, users maybe at a branch office, you have one or two uh, individuals. It doesn't necessitate the, the need to actually purchase a, a, a VPN router. You can actually have those individuals directly connect to a network in Azure using point to site. That's, um, so that's, that's more of an individual to a, you know, a Azure network. <clears throat> and then we have, um, you know, here at the bottom, Express Route is, is that low latency MPLS direct connect, and you can go anywhere from, you know, 50 megabits all the way up to 10 gigabits uh, of uh, connectivity directly to Azure. And I also have customers with combinations of these. They have, you know, Express Route for primary, and they can do some things with networking in Azure using a, a border gateway pr um, protocol, BGP, uh, to be able to fail over to the site-to-site -site connection should something um, you know, happen with uh, the express route connection. So, you know, bottom line here is that this is just depicting the stuff in the middle that we're going to talk about here in the next couple of slides. Okay, cool. One thing that I do want to clean up just to, yeah. just uh, real quick is that I've heard people um, talk about express route in Office 365, and we don't do express route to Office 365, correct? Yeah, that's not recommended. Um, yeah. I, there are some valid business cases, uh, you know, I think particularly maybe in the government spaces, and there are, I think there are some, some valid scenarios where that makes sense, but uh, by and large, it's not something we recommend for, uh, you know, that Office 365 is a public service. Um, you know, we, we encrypt and secure traffic going to those public services, so it's, you know, Express Route doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in that, in that scenario. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because I've heard yeah, good. a lot of people... <clears throat> recommend Express Route for Office 365, and I'm like, uh, I don't think we want to do that. <laughs> yep, so, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. All right, so um, so I, 
I have a, um, two slides where just kind of quickly walk through all the different ways you can connect to stuff in Azure. And by far and away, the easiest way is this top one, um, just using internet connectivity. And I've got a couple of virtual machines that we're going to look at here in a couple of minutes uh, that I have public IP addresses assigned to those machines, and I can connect to them directly from the internet anywhere. So um, the the interesting point I want to make about well, that so is... so hang on. So you can sure. RDP to them, correct? That, yes. And we'll talk a little bit about how how that works. Yeah. Um, and and at, a, at, a, at a high level, I can draw out a diagram here in a couple minutes, but at a high level, when you have a, let's just you know, to, um, talk about a, a virtual machine that you want to have RDP connectivity to it, um, we have in place what's called a network security group. So you, you define ACLs or policies saying, I only want to allow traffic to port 3389, which is RDP, um, to get to my VM. So if you actually connect to your virtual machine, that has a public IP address, you will not see that public IP address on the network interface. So um, it, it, it actually is going to have a private IP address associated with it. And we abstract out the public IP address for a number of reasons. Um, as part of our, our service uh, level agreement we extend to customers, we provide uh, distributed denial of service uh, attack uh, prevention, detection, you know, pre prevention and, and mitigation, the remediation. Yeah. And the way, way we do that is by putting stuff in the middle. We don't disclose a whole lot of detail about what that stuff looks like for obvious reasons. But, um, you know, so that's why we don't actually directly assign that IP address to resources so you have in Azure. Right. Uh, um, and, you know, so, you know, why I say this is the easiest way to connect to those, you know, and we're talking again about virtual machines, easiest way to connect to a virtual machine, you don't have to deploy a virtual machine in Azure that has a public IP address. You can... Uh, you can make it you know, sit entirely on a, a private network and make it totally inaccessible from the Internet. So, so that, that's an option as well. <clears throat> and obviously to do that, you need to have some connectivity you know, vehicle for that traffic to ride over, which is what some of these other options are for. So site-to-site -site connectivity, that's what I have uh, between my home office and Azure right now. So that's where you'd use more of an appliance um, that would connect to an Azure um, VPN gateway, so that's the Azure component that, you, that the appliance that would be on-prem would connect to. Um, but we also support connectivity options to a number of other vendor devices. Like we've got network virtual appliances from Cisco, Checkpoint, you know, F5, Barracuda. You know, pretty much name your vendor. We have it's, it's likely supported to be runnable in Azure and allow you to actually establish site-to-site -site, you know IPsec tunnels between your branch offices in Azure using those. Um, and there might be you know, valid reasons for customers to use those. Some of those vendors have features that maybe the VPN gateway don't, does not have. Um, another uh, you know, reason why a um, you know, customer might use those, maybe they already have you know, agreements, uh, licensing and, and purchasing agreements with those vendors that make sense for them to, and, and, and more specifically expertise on their staff, on how to manage and, and operate those devices. So it might make sense for them to use those. So um, the point is we support a number of options for this one. Yeah. If you're doing site-to-site -site VPN, mm -hmm. I assume there's a way to configure the VPN on the Azure side so that it's only available to you or to your... That is correct. Yep. You, have, yep. Yeah. you actually define a, a secret, which is, for all intents and purposes, a password. Yeah. Um, and, and that has to be known at both sides. So okay. at the end of the day, I mean, you know, Azure exposes a public endpoint that your device connects to, so you have to have... Um, you know, all the, the different, you know, phase one, phase two, you know, phase or other different negotiations VPN goes through. And, and one of them is a secret exchange. And that kind of allows the, the two devices to sync up and start talking. Okay. Yep. Um, and so, you know, they, these, the, the site to site VPN is really great for, you know, it, it, well, first of all, it's really, it's a, it's a rapid way to connect to Azure. And you don't have to have, a, I, I talked about having devices on, um, in your corporate network or in your, your branch office, you don't necessarily even have to have a device. It actually works with um, uh, Windows uh, routing and remote access service. So, so it can actually do, be a software-based solution to connect to Azure. Um, but the point is that the site-to-site -site VPN is, is really quick to set up. You know, there's no circuit provisioning. Uh, it's just a matter of you know, setting up the secret, you know, setting up the gateway in Azure, and, and connecting up, and, and you're on your merry way. So it's, it's really good and suitable for... Um, you know, pr proof of concepts or, you know, developers that are, are, you know, maybe a dev test scenario where they have dev servers in Azure. Um, 
or maybe a smaller branch office. You know, I have a lot of customers that might have offices, you know, with a handful of users. It doesn't make sense to invest in thousands of dollars a month of an MPLS connection. This is a, you know, valid, you know, perfectly valid way to connect. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and you did that with your router. So, yep. so you don't have to maintain that on a machine. You, That's you correct. Yep. Set your yeah, it's, it's done at a device level. Yep. Cool. Um, and then, you know, the, the one at the bottom is, is you know, express route, and that's that, that low latency, you know, connection anywhere from 50 megabits to 10 gigabits we talked about previously. Um, the benefit of that is that it, it is completely private. So, um, you know, VPN connectivity goes over the Internet, so it's unpredictable, non-deterministic. So the path it takes, express route, route you actually own that MPLS or, or, or lease, that MPLS connection from the carrier. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, the, you you haul that connection in to um, a third party, a middleman like an IP exchange, um, or some some of the carriers have relationships with us where they can actually, you know, peer that connection directly to us. So um, so you might be one or two hops away from an Azure data center, um, you know, very low latency, uh, you know, high bandwidth, private and secure connection that that customers can use. Um, you know, this is actually a really good way that customers can avoid. Or, or uh, rather, I should say that a good way to appease a security team at, at a lot of customers, you know, because um, they have concerns about you know shuttling maybe customer data over the public internet, even though it might be in an encrypted IPsec tunnel, um, such as the case that VPN uses. Express route is a good uh, good alternative to that because it's you know completely secure and customer owned, completely private. Yep, that's exactly. Yep, yep. All right. Um, so, so those are the ways that you can connect from uh, to stuff in Azure. But if you have things in Azure, um, you know maybe you have um, a grouping of servers in the East you know, U.S. and maybe some in Europe or some in the West U.S. If you want to connect those networks together to allow VMs to talk across regions um, or to talk, um, you know maybe you have a you know a, a development environment or development network in Azure maybe in the east and a production environment in the east and both of those need to talk back to your corporate network um, so you know there's a number of scenarios where you might have a need to connect up networks that you've defined in Azure um, one of them is this way called VNet peering um, the cool thing about peering and I've got an example of that that I'll show you here in a minute um, VNet peering allows you to wire up two, two distinctly different networks. Obviously, they can't have IP ranges overlap, but you can actually wire them up, um, and you don't have to worry about VPNs or you know, IPsec tunnels in Azure. Um, it's all done, uh, you know, basically, we route traffic between those networks at a very high rate of speed. So you know, we don't really have advertised details about what that speed is, but you're not throttled or, or uh, restricted to an appliance or a VPN device that maybe you deploy in Azure. So this is a really high speed way to connect up networks in Azure. The, the restriction is that they have to be in the same region today. That that restriction hopefully will go away at some some point in the future, but right now um, that is a requirement. So like both of them would have to be in the east or both of them would have to be in the west. Yeah, so I'm just building a network between virtual networks in Azure. In Azure, yep, yep, to allow them to talk, yep. So. So I've got a kind of so I'm slowly building up a story, and I've got an end-to-end -end example that kind of demonstrates all of this. So so we'll I'm just kind of we'll we'll take we'll dive into that, and I'll uh, I'll highlight how that's done in the portal. Okay. Um, and the other way to do it is by using a, um, a a VNet gateway that I talked about earlier, where you want to allow connectivity from your network into Azure, and you can deploy a VPN gateway in Azure. Um, you can actually do that within Azure. So this is the solution that you would use if you want to go across region, maybe from the east to the west. So you could actually create a VPN tunnel over our network um, that would you know, bridge the gap between those two networks. Um, so that's another, another option that you have to, um, you know, to, to wire up networks virtually in Azure. All right. Um, so with that, I think it's, uh, you know, we talked enough about some slides. Let's go ahead and dive into to uh, the portal and take a look at what I've got set up. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love the slides. But yeah, man, I love I love hands-on. Yeah, I agree. 